Hi, please help me. Please send help. Please, please send help. Welcome back to this place on the internet. Basically, um, you've hit on writing an essay with me, attempting to write an essay, writing an essay for my English degree, whatever you want to call it. Eight days. I have eight days to write this thing. You've caught me at a good time because I've just got done literally today, like five minutes ago, finishing um, my first essay of the semester, which is for a different class. And so the essay we're going to work on um, in this vlog is all for my Renaissance class, and it is on the Fairy Queen. I just got done writing one on Paradise Lost. I just finished up the conclusion. I hate conclusions. They are the worst thing to ever exist, but it's okay because my professor also hates conclusions. He said that, you know, you can never, you can never conclude. You can never be done saying something about a piece of work. Is there ever an end point? No. So I ended my essay with a question mark because a question mark necessitates hopefully continuation of something. What we need to do for this essay though, which is on the Fairy Queen, and I will go pretty in depth, I think, in this video about my topic, what I'm working on, how I'm working on it, what we're doing. Um, you've caught me also at a good point because we are going to finish up reading our secondary sources and getting all of our material together today for the essay, which I believe, hopefully, I usually end up adding more in as we go because you just find more and more interesting things to talk about. But as of right now, I have one book left to read. It's not really a book. I don't think I'm going to read the whole thing, just a, just a couple few select essays in it, so let me go grab it. This first one is called, ooh, it's a very nice old book. It's called Wanton Eyes and Chaste Desires. It has a whole bunch of essays about um, the fairy queen that I am going to be using. My essay very broadly is just on motherhood in book one of the fairy queen, so I'll talk about the actual essay topic more in depth when I, <laughs> to be honest, have it all figured out because we're still getting there. This is what we're going to start with today, just reading through this secondary source. So for an essay like this, basically when you are an English major, the kind of parameters and like the quality of your essay changes, it changes with every professor, every course. For example, this essay is very researched focused. It's more of like a research paper, whereas the one I just finished was very much of like your own thing. Um, he didn't want us to use very many secondary sources, whereas this paper, we are very much encouraged and in fact need to respond to a bunch of um, scholarly articles and like the research that has come before us and what other scholars are saying about, you know, our specific topic and respond to them in either, you know, agreeing with them, employing their arguments in our essays, teasing out their arguments, adding on, um, refuting, disagreeing with what they've said about certain theories or essentially what they're saying is happening in, for example, The Fairy Queen. When I'm looking for secondary sources, definitely prefer having mine in paper format just because it's easier for my eyes. I have a bunch of eye problems and other brain problems from a brain injury, so um, that's a whole other story, but I do prefer having mine in physical form. Plus, it means you get to go to your school library, which is always just a fun trip for me. So, for example, these are two different kinds, I would say, that I look for. This one is called Virgin Mother, Maiden Queen. This is more historical information. So this whole book is essentially about Queen Elizabeth the I um, and all about the title Virgin, Ma uh, Virgin Mother, Maiden Queen, because Elizabeth the I, um, you know, simultaneously got to be two impossible things at once, or two things that would make being both of them at once impossible, a virgin and a mother. And then this one, which we're about to delve into, Wants and Eyes and Chaste Desires, is about the text itself, right? The Fairy Queen. So while there may be mention of, of course, the historical context and historical things, this is more scholars talking about, you know, what's going on in The Fairy Queen. Um, this one about women and stuff like that. So you have topics like um, beauty, chastity, um, the importance of being fairest is what one of the essays is called. I've already read this, I pretty much read the whole thing, so that's checked off. That was a really, really good resource, and now we're gonna hope that this one is another good one. Um, but like I said, this is my last one, so I've already, I've already done copious amounts of reading, and I have my whole um, work cited list done and solidified and all of them read except for this one and then i will show you what i do when i read a secondary source like this one so i saved this one for last okay, so here is my document where i've compiled all of my sources and my notes on them as well as quotes so basically what i've done for let's take this one 
This one, I've just, you know, listed the name so that I can go back and find it later, but I read through the whole thing and then I just absolutely copy every single quote um, and argument that I think either, you know, I want to respond to, could help me strengthen my arguments, or just really important things from that essay that coincides to my topic. Um, so for example, this one was all about Elizabeth. Um, this one's more just information, so there wasn't really a big argument to attain, but for example, in one like, in one like Joanne Craig's article um, about motherhood, which is of course my topic and stuff like that, I pulled out the quotes and then essentially just kind of outline um, what she's talking about, what like her essay is about so that I can kind of refer back to it as well as see like what these quotes mean in that context. Um, but yeah, and then when I'm done with this whole document, I will print it out and annotate it. Um, so we need to make one last section for um, Sheila T. Kavanaugh and then read through her research paper, outline her argument, and jot down anything that is going to be useful. Okay, so I just printed off um, all of my things. My printer is running out of ink, which is sad, but I'm gonna take this and um, my pencil case and just annotate and like get a better sense of how I'm gonna use my sources and what I'm actually gonna say. So when I go to class, I'm going to stop by the library first and return this big, big book that I thought was something I needed for my essay, but somehow I got the sciences. As fascinating as statistics and biomedical engineering and um, this is, this is not going to help me. Oh, hello there. All right, so I am back from class. I'm gonna stand on my tippy toes and I am making more coffee because a lot of coffee gets consumed when I write essays and I'm just not gonna feel bad about it. I literally just printed off my essay to hand in in tomorrow's class and now tonight I'm gonna sit down as soon as this is brewed and I really need to cement the stuff that I printed off today that you saw me highlighting and annotating on because like I have an idea of what I want to talk about but I don't really know where it's going yet which is interesting because some essays they kind of you write them, you know what you're trying to say, but for this one, he has an interesting, it's not an interesting approach. I think it's the correct approach and it's really good advice and I need to remember it. But like he said on my um, statement of intent, which is just where you, you know, state what you're going to do in your essay and it gets approved and it's a chance for feedback early on. He's like, don't come up with a theory and try to fit the work or the text or whatever into your theory. Like just let the work speak and like examine what's there see what's there talk about what's there so don't like force it into this container that it's not necessarily going to fit into which i love doing because it's easy but it's wrong so it's it's not it's not even correct anyway Hello everyone, welcome to The Hunger Games. So essentially, it's now the next day. I am hyped up for some reason, not on caffeine. I've only had one cup of coffee this morning. I just got back from class. I handed in my essay, maybe that's why I'm hyped up. Get that nice high off of submitting assignments. This is what I did to my notes last night, as you can see. I think I kind of showed you 
I essentially went through them all and then devised like a color scheme for my outline because I also made an outline last night. So this is like my saving grace. I don't do this for every single essay, but just because this one has so many like parts that I need to fit into specific places I'm planning on doing. So I just wanted to make sure like I kept track of that. And then because it is more of a research paper and you need to respond to people's research, um, I organized kind of where and how I wanted to do that as well, which is going to be so helpful. I've never done this before, um, this kind of outline. So I just did the introduction and then I'm breaking down each paragraph by each motherly figure I'm talking about. And then in that paragraph, I'm also going to respond to um, others' arguments and stuff like that. And then I definitely did not include a conclusion because I hate conclusions. And then I did do some basic annotation just for stuff I don't want to forget. Um, I find this really helpful because essentially you kind of already start writing pieces of your essay when you go through your essay notes and even in the margins like so many ideas come up for me when I read back through these so um, I did a lot for this piece and then just going down this whole thing is like color coded differently and just figured it all out which is the piece that honestly takes so long so now that is done and today we're actually going to start writing the essay. I essentially just want to get the introduction done. Why does you, you should go immediately to Times New Roman. Why? Don't try to, don't try to fake me out with the Calibri. All right, so it begins. I'm feeling good. I have the first two sentences down. This title is not going to stay. I just, it really bothers me when I don't have a title. So I just slap something there, but um, I think this is just how I want to start it. Just like immediately get into the historical background um so that he knows that i know what i'm talking about when i'm discussing everything that comes after and then um i'm just gonna go through like i said and um make sure that i check off or at least have read over all of the right now blue highlights from my research that corresponds to the intro and then just kind of go from there because i feel like i already have a lot of steam so Okay, yes, yeah, so I did just finish the oops, introduction. It took me a little bit, but I did take some breaks and we are sitting at 449 words. Something that does concern me about this essay is that the maximum word limit is only 2000. And for something um, of this, where I have like literally just so much to talk about, that is a bit concerning to me. And I think 2000 words is gonna be really hard to fit all of this in so we gotta be concise we gotta keep it snappy um but one thing i am gonna do right now i will read you my introduction because i do want to talk pretty in depth and also transparently about how i write my essay what it's about blah 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 and i just love when other people talk about this stuff and i wish other people would like read what they've written and stuff so i will do that i'm not sure if i'm gonna do that right now or tomorrow but one last thing i'm gonna do because i do edit as i go like i read it over a bunch of times as i'm going but for example when I'm giving just like examples and what's going to follow in the essay, I want to add some little embellishments just to number one, make it more interesting, um, embellishments that will also enhance or hone in my point. So for example, error and Carissa are two characters. They're each going to have, of course, their own paragraphs to talk about them and stuff like that. But um, error is a monster, whereas Carissa is like a positive embodiment of motherhood and chastity. Um, which does not mean the same thing as like our definition of like straight celibacy today. So I'm just going to add some little quotes from the text as well. So I'm going to pull some things that will just make it, you know, make it a bit better and show that I have a good understanding and also point to where we're actually headed with these characters and their representations of motherhood. So um, I'm going to my tabs I've just done in blue. The green is for a different assignment, um, but the blue is what I've tabbed for my essay just to keep track of. So I've underlined anything that is about the people and the mothers that I'm talking about.
Okay, there we go. So we fixed it up a little bit um, and just added some things to make it more interesting and also some things that will come back around later, which is always good. So I said, from Air's Cursed Spawn of Serpents. Oh, why? Why does it remove my accent? I said, from Air's Cursed Spawn of Serpent Small in Canto 1 to Carissa's Hatred of Cupid Wanton Snare in Canto 10. Um, and this is just like, you know, very passionate love without reason. Um, leads to lust and perversion and sin and error essentially so we've got two opposing images um, which is good and then error I'm going to talk about in the first paragraph and Carissa in the last paragraph before the conclusion and then they kind of already embody some stuff um, that I'm talking about that works with the representation of, representations of Elizabeth but something we got to figure out right now is how the hell to cite the fairy queen because this is so wrong I think this is so wrong um, I just made I just jotted down like the book number, the canto number, the stanza number, and the line number. Um, but I don't think that's the actual way. So I'm gonna do a quick Google search. Um, a really good trick if like you can't find how to cite a particular work, just go and pull up like a research paper, you know, a scholarly article that's been peer approved and then look how they cite it. And then for example, like he gave me a quote and because I have the fairy queen, you know, like in a, an actual edition of the fairy queen just went to book two canto nine stanza 50 and made sure that his quote lined up with what was there and it does and because um this is from 2021 i'm hoping i should probably double check that but then i know that they are using the um probably the most updated version of mla which i'm also using so then we will be good to go so that is how i guess you do it how did he do it what did i say book number book number canto number stanza number all right so that is the introduction done which is all i wanted to get done on this tonight so <laughs> goodbye um i actually have so much other work to do right now so i need to start on just my general readings all right hey it's the next night it's 7 24 and i've not yet started on my next paragraph i know but i did promise i would read my introduction um so far just the it's kind of i don't really do a rough draft like i know lots of people draft essays i guess i kind of do but it's more in like a paragraph by paragraph way like i think that's why it takes me so long to write essays i would love to try just approaching it not so formally and just like writing down what i want to say regardless of how i want to say it but i spend so much time in my head like thinking about how i want to say the sentences that it just takes them longer to get on actually on the page if that makes sense anyway so it's sitting at 461 words i like having a long introductory paragraph especially for an essay like this because i felt like just for the topic and also for this class i needed to provide like some background and just some historical context for what I was talking about. So anyway, I'm just going to shut up, get my glasses and oh, actually not shut up. I'm going to read this to you. Okay. In 1559, Elizabeth I was crowned and married in one ceremony that served both as her coronation and wedding, wearing her hair long and flowing to indicate both the virginal and bridal significance of the day. Elizabeth entered into a maternal and a matrimonial relationship with England and at the same time stepped into the complicated space of being a female ruler, which she would come to fill with similarly contradictory images of herself. And then, you know, we have a quotation. Yoking together the two greatest female virtues of her time, chastity and motherhood, Elizabeth simultaneously styled herself as the maiden queen and mother of England. Two opposing extremes that scholar Joanne Craig explains was necessary in order to assuage the anxiety of a public coming to terms with a female ruler. These two representations should cancel each other out, but in Elizabeth they came together to create the greatest ideal of womanhood in a figure who could become a mother without disturbing the sanctity of the female body, much like the Virgin Mary. Poised as mother and virgin, this paradox did begin to create anxiety in the 1560s as there is little indication that Elizabeth's metaphorical motherhood would become a biological reality. As John N. King points out, the desire for dynastic continuity made it appropriate to avoid or suppress praise of Elizabeth as Diana. And it was not until 1570 that some began to accept that she would never marry or bear children. Finally, the famous cult of the Virgin Queen, who would remain ever wedded to her nation, took hold in officially sponsored propaganda, and Elizabeth fully embodied the impossible dual ideal that would influence the depiction and representation of female sexuality and motherhood during her reign and beyond. 
Edmund Spencer's The Fairy Queen is one text that is intimately tied to Queen Elizabeth and displays many different portrayals, caricatures, and angelic as well as demonizing depictions of mothers. Spencer's epic unfolds in a strange landscape that mirrors England just as the motherly figures within reflect, relate to, and comment on Elizabeth's at once celibate and maternal queenship. The essay that follows will examine each motherly figure in Book One of The Fairy Queen and explore how Spencer creates and populates the space of the maternal and virginal in reference to the mother of England. From Errors, Cursed Spawn of Serpent Small, in Canto 1 to Carissa's hatred of Cupid's wanton snare in Canto 10, I argue that each biological mother works to reinforce the representations Elizabeth has fostered of herself, and that Spencer carefully constructs the mothers in his work to stand as foils of the motherly queen and fall as failures next to the maiden ruler. That is kind of the first draft, I guess, of the introduction. Um, that's something I kind of wanted to talk about because I take so many days, like I could never, well I probably could, but I don't and I would never want to write my essay in one sitting or like in one night. I know so many people do. Props off to them, honestly. First of all, it would just stress me out so much, but I just don't think, like physically I'm not capable of doing it right now because I have a lot of eye problems, so like for health reasons I have to space it out, but just in terms of like, that's not what I would do even if I was 100% healthy. What I've kind of done this semester, kind of taking at least 10 days before the essay is due and then setting myself one day to do each paragraph. So last night I did the introduction. Today I'm gonna talk about paragraph one, write up paragraph one, tomorrow's gonna be paragraph two, so on and so forth. And then that also gives me the chance to revise what has come before each day that I'm starting like a new paragraph. So for example, tonight I'm starting paragraph one, but I'm gonna read through this introduction, tweak it, edit it, add stuff, do more research, probably not more research actually, um, and then start on paragraph two. And then that'll be the same so that by the time I get to the last day, like I'm gonna be reading through the essay at least like six or seven times um, and editing it each time and then rereading those edits each time, which is cool. Um, and it's something I probably wouldn't do if like I wrote it in one day and then, you know, I proofread it like maybe a couple times, read it out loud, blah, blah, blah. But I would never um, have the chance or opportunity or time to go back and edit it this much, if that makes sense, like doing it this way. So yeah, but that is the way that my introduction is sitting right now. Don't hate it. Um, I think it might be a little repetitive. If anything, I could probably cut some things. I'll especially need to keep an eye on the word count because um, this is one that I could make, you could honestly make that, you could make any essay topic into a book, but this is one that I feel like I have a lot to say and we're already sitting at almost 500 words. So I'm also breaking up because I'm getting stressed about this, but yeah, we need to get writing. So let's jump in to paragraph one. wind ambience down oh my gosh it is now another day of essay writing i was feeling not very much motivation so what i decided to do something that always gets me in the mood to write is so much harry potter ambience and i lit some candles i'm very much in the christmas mood today so today's frosted gingerbread along with just this guy and i have my essay ready to go right here so um, I prefer writing essays on my laptop just because I like writing on the floor, anywhere, outside. I just prefer to have it always on my laptop. So as you can see, where are we? This is the beginning. So we've got 
quite a lot done so far. Today I'm working on paragraph, I've done the introduction, I've done the paragraph about Error, who is like a creature who's half snake, half woman, who has children that, she has like little snake children, they go into her mouth. Um, and then when she dies, they eat her body. It's very gross and cool. And then I've done the next paragraph, which is about a mother named Corsica. Wait, yeah. And she represents basically the failings and perversion of Catholicism since Queen Elizabeth was a Protestant queen and they were pretty much in the process of condemning all of Catholicism. And so Corsica um, is very much a Catholic woman and she has a daughter named Abessa who um, forms a whoredom with a thief named Kirkerpine, whose name literally, literally means like ravishing the church. So he's stealing things from the church and bringing them to her daughter and stuff. So that's what she represents. And then now I'm going to be talking about a woman named Lucifera, who is the queen of the House of Pride in book one of the Fairy Queen. Um, her mate or her husband is Satan. Like Satan is literally in the Fairy Queen. It's the wildest book you'll ever read. But essentially um, she's pride. So she is the mother of all the sins, the mother of the deadly sins. Um, the mother of all sin, the worst sin, pride, and then her court is basically formed of the rest of the deadly sins, and you basically go into her palace, you don't leave, you die, and there is a dunghill of corpses that look like a butcher's stall, like in the dungeons of her castle, so another grotesque one, but her court, it's really interesting, like it is a court, it's a palace, and so it does kind of parallel Queen Elizabeth's court in different ways, but I'm going to be talking about mostly pride as like the mother of all sins, since this is an essay about the um, depictions and caricatures of motherhood. So this is the paragraph I wanted to film today because this is the paragraph I feel least confident about. I don't, I know what I'm saying to an extent, um, and I have some really cool examples that parallel Elizabeth's reign as well as Lucifer's time and the Red Cross Knight's time in her court in book one of the Fairy Queen, but this is the one that I'm just feeling, you know, a little bit murky about. I need to go through it. I don't have a lot of textual support for this part in my essay, and to be honest, like, the, I have been using, have been using it, yeah, but mostly it's been more of a research paper talking about other people's theories and then colliding them and discussing them with my own. So I do need to go back and read everything, but right now something else I'm worried about is that we're sitting at a one, a 100, 1,138 words and the maximum is 2,000 words. And I still have Lucifera to talk about in this paragraph, as well as one more paragraph to talk about a different mother as well as the conclusion. So that is really what I'm worried about because we're already at 1,100 words. Something else that I do do if, for example, I hate something I've written, where is it? I will highlight it, oh yes, I will highlight it in yellow. So for example, I've already fixed this part so we can unhighlight this, but if I really don't like, for example, the word choice or just the construction, I think it's awkward, I think it sucks, I'll just highlight it and then I'll come back to it a few days later with fresh eyes and usually by then I can fix it up better. Let's start a new paragraph. Okay, so I've been sitting here staring at the screen, not knowing what to write for a stupidly long time. But then I just had a breakthrough because I realized that when I was sitting in class, like a huge idea came to me about how I could like tie this in um, and make the figure of Lucifer like a really good argument for the essay. And because I was being so nice to myself and considerate for a future Emma, I literally wrote down all that I was thinking and the ideas in the margins of my notes, like when I was in class, because, um, we were talking about Queen Elizabeth and it came up. So all that in the margin is something that is literally the piece that I was stuck at. So I guess that's another tip. If like, if you are anywhere and you have any single thought about the essay you're writing, like write it down 
immediately because otherwise it could just potentially be gone. I feel like I spent way too much time on that paragraph. That was, oh my gosh, but I'm done for the day and that's something that's been really important to me. It's just stopping, like when I get to the end of the paragraph. Like, just, you're done, you know? You're done. Okay, hi, how you doing? It's now a few days later. Um, I haven't updated you guys just because it's pretty much been the exact same thing, just taking day by day to do the paragraphs, and I did finish the first draft of my essay. I wouldn't really call it the first draft because, like I keep saying, um, I edit it as I go over a period of days so that it, you know, exponentially gets more and more edits, but the first, you know, finished product from introduction to conclusion of the essay is done, which is great because today is the night before the essay is due, it's due tomorrow afternoon, and I guess what? I'm out of ink. My dumb printer, I hate printers when they do this. I hate printers so much. We're low on color, but we have black, like it's perfectly fine, but it won't print, like it just prints blank pages. Maybe this was the first essay tip, make sure you can print your essay, but it's okay because I sent an SOS to my mom, so I'm gonna email my essay over to her and have them print it at my parents' house. We do have, of course, a few things to do before I send that document over tonight and before I hand it in tomorrow, which I'm really excited about. Number one, um, I don't have a title yet, right? I just put that placeholder, which I might work into an actual title. And now that the essay is done, I think I have a better idea of what I would want to call the paper that I've been working on. As well, I need to add page numbers. We'll read it through, edit it, change things. Um, I'm just under the 2000 word count, which is perfect. So I could even add a few words if I need to, or add a sentence here or there if I want to say more, which is great because I did have a few places I had marked for that. So that's what we're gonna do now is add the title. Oh, and we need to do the work cited, which is fine because I pretty much just have that in another document that I just need to copy and paste. The decision has been made, ultimately, to not say yoking. I don't know, I just don't like it. Just thought I'd update you on that. I also wanted to share, as well as go over this, because my professor very kindly included... I love when people do this because it gives you just good a good time and better ideas, um, but a writing checklist, as he calls it. So um, it's a little bit of advice, especially on citing, but then there is a whole checklist of stuff oops, to go through when you are writing your essay and before you hand it in. So I thought we could go over everything he's saying. So number one is, do I have a clear argument with one point leading logically to the next? I think so. I outlined my argument and I acted upon that argument. Okay. Does my essay do justice to the topic? Are there gaps in the discussion? Have I distorted anything? I used to be really bad for that. I probably still am to an extent where I was already talking about at the beginning of this video that you just like slotting the work into your argument when it doesn't actually work like that. So this time I definitely repaired some stuff, especially concerning the last paragraph of my essay because it's all about the different mothers, right? And all the depictions of the mothers like pretty much Wait, how many are there? Four of them. Um, three of them are just like monstrous. They're awful. It's really gross. There's a really clear negative view of mothers and like female anatomy. But then there is one woman named Carissa whose name means charity. Um, and she is like the perfect mother. So um, I, I was originally just not going to even talk about her. And he was like, you obviously have to talk about her. Like you can't just ignore stuff in the text. And I was like, you are very right. So um, anyway, okay. Have I included sufficient, have I included sufficient attention to details? I think so. Like a close work, close look at the work. I've definitely included a lot of quotes. Um, I have paid attention to little details to prove my argument, like stuff like where are all the fathers? <laughs> there's no fathers. There's really no fathers mentioned at all. Um, there's a lot of really cool little tidbits concerning like Catholic um, propaganda and Catholicism versus Protestantism also in my argument, which I think is good. Are any quotations smoothly integrated with my own grammar? Yes, they're all integrated with my own grammar. Are individual paragraphs unified? For example, can you say this paragraph is about blah blah blah? Yes, each paragraph is about the different mother and specifically what their representation is saying about Elizabeth. 
does the opening sentence of each paragraph show how it relates logically to the preceding paragraph? That's when I need to check because I think I just kind of went for it. Some of them do for sure. Okay, actually they're fine. I'm just gonna leave them alone. I'm not changing it now. And uh, Okay, before you hand in your essay, here's just what he says. Read it aloud to yourself. Have someone else read it aloud to you. Have an honest person, honest is italicized, read it and identify passages that are unclear or awkward. I don't have anyone who's gonna do that for me right now um rewrite each sentence in fewer words okay are there sentences that can be combined and hence condensed yes i did that okay number five is something number five is this is literally why it takes me so long to write my essay consider whether every word used is exactly the right one for the situation yes i think i 100 percent did that because that is literally why it takes me so long because i sit there and i'm like what word, like what word do I want to use? I know what I want to say, but I want to make sure I say it like exactly how I want to. So I really think I have that. At least I hope so. Um, number six, check every quotation for accuracy. Number seven, check the page numbers of any citation. And number eight, proofread it again after it's been printed. Okay, I think we're good. We're done. I did it. I ended up calling it Feminine Foils of Queen Elizabeth in book one of the Fairy Queen, Spencer's Mothers as Political Discourse. So kind of sounds a little actually i would read it i don't think it sounds boring feels so good to be done i feel like i just gave birth <laughs> all right so this is gonna be the last clip i got my essay back which i'm very excited to share with you guys because this is something i was debating putting into the video but i'm like no this is a good like educational portion i can let you know what like i learned from the essay what i did well um any advice that i would give from like writing this essay and stuff like that so i decided just to go over it get over my fear of telling people what mark i got because at the end of the day it doesn't matter um you passed <laughs> so i did pretty well on this essay actually i'm not gonna go through every page but i will tell you where i most found stuff that i was struggling with or stuff that i um did well on or could do better on and i'll show you my grade first because i know that's what you're all here for here it is everyone i did get a 92 which feels really really good um and i think just to start with like the last critique or not, it's not really a critique it's just a thing that he said i'm largely responding to the essay's ideas um and that is actually a sign of the success of the essay so a lot of this whole page that i will show you isn't really talking about the technical writing aspects of my essay or mistakes I've made with grammar or spelling because I think I know I'm kind of past that which is good it's more just responding now to like more I guess like mature ideas of the essay and the text itself that I'm discussing which is good this is actually I think a good piece of feedback so and I also really really appreciate this professor's feedback he took so much um, time and did such an amazing job and I love professors that give as much feedback as possible so I really really appreciate that this is one of the sections I wanted to discuss just basically this paragraph this is the um, end here of my opening paragraph of my introduction so as you can see my introduction spanned a page and a half um, and that's something I always get good feedback about so I wanted to point that out because in most of my university essays that I've written I tend to write um, longer than usual probably introductory paragraphs or introductory sections as you can see this one for this time it's a page and a half but I always get really good feedback when it's long because I feel like I do take the time to lay out the scenario lay out the situation and then go pretty in depth into what the essay is going to talk about so I did get that comment again so that's something I would suggest because before I used to hate introductory paragraphs but I've started to use them already as a starting point to get into the essay but also provide um, some good context and stuff like that this was a sloppy job on my part i just completely forgot to cite this person um for some reason i thought i had but i just completely forgot because as you can see at the end of this sentence there's no citation so that's just that's just a sloppy mistake my bad <laughs> this is also a good example paragraph because it does point out stuff that i do well but then the most um common comment that i got throughout the essay responding just to like my language and my sentence structure and my syntax was just that i have very awkward sentences <laughs> i did avoid all comma splice um comments so i feel good about that but i did get a lot of awkward wording um points deduced and i think that's where i lost most of my marks in terms of like the actual technical writing of the essay so just like this sentence you can see it's just a little bit awkward and probably too long so so as you can see i relied way too heavily on this one source that i had um that was providing me with my information of protestant views on the female and on just the protestant religion um i relied way too much on the scholar helen hackett 
Helen Hackett and she apparently, I don't know whether it was outdated or whether I just relied too much on one scholar. So that was a mistake that I made that I definitely learned from. I just wanted to, I should in the future double check everything and not just rely on one scholarly person and trust them because um, my professor like corrected basically the views of hers that I integrated into my essay to prove a point. Um, and he said, no, that would be more true of Catholicism in fact and not Protestantism. So um, yeah, and same same thing here um and then he did provide a lot of good information at the comments at the end so that was good so yeah i am happy with that because most of his one whole page of comments is actually just like kind of entering into a discussion with my essay which feels really good to have like a conversation about it um and like talk back and forth and develop the ideas and not have an essay that is marked so much or has points reduced for um how to write an essay essentially but an essay whose mark comes largely from the ideas and like what you've developed and the research you've done which feels good because as you saw i did a bunch of research for this essay so um yeah i am happy with that but i did learn a lot the most important thing i learned i think um this course has been so helpful with that that is actually one of the things that he does include in here because he says the argument recognizes the complexity of motherhood in the book by considering both the negative and positive exemplars. However, with the latter, there lingers an attempt to make them still something at least slightly negative to make them fit a thesis. Um, and that is something I really learned. Like, I was aware when I handed it in. I hadn't completely eradicated my, like, fitting um, some of the text into my thesis, which is a really hard thing to do because I think I've been programmed since high school since elementary school in English classes and stuff like that to make things fit a thesis, to develop a thesis first and then come to the text second. And this course um, especially, and now with this essay, is just really like teaching me how to come to the text first and then develop a thesis. Um, and so it's kind of like this reversal of what I've been taught and it's really, really helpful. I really hope you enjoyed this process. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. Um, doing this video also gave me a ton of motivation to work a bit harder. Yeah, I would love to do more of these because they're great and I love being able to look back on them and also learn from them myself. So do let me know what you thought of this video, if you enjoyed it, um, if it was helpful in any way, shape or form, if you are writing something, I wish you all the best of luck. And yeah, there is how I write an essay, I guess. So yeah, thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Ciao.